Okay, welcome to our little PowerPoint on Islam, the Quran, and terrorism. This will serve as an opening to our exploration in the Middle East. Uh, some of you have told me that uh, <clears throat> they were a little too long, so I'm going to make an attempt here to keep it to 10 minutes, so bear with me. Of course, you can pause and go back if you need to. Um, the main uh, things we're going to cover in this uh, is the basics on ISIS, what that is, uh, as, and we're going to use it as a launch pad into conceptions and misconceptions of the Middle East and Islam. We're going to talk about Islam, and by extension, the Quran, uh, and Muhammad and the times he was living in to give you some context for the origins of Islam. All right, <clears throat> terms to, and people to know for tomorrow's quiz, and I'll repeat this later on, uh, are Islam, uh, and Islam is the religion. Muslims are those who practice Islam. Uh, we're going to talk about the Quran, which is the literal word of God in the Islamic religion, sort of uh, the holy book, so to speak. We're going to talk about the five pillars of faith of Islam, uh, the term secularism. We're talking about the hadiths, jihad, and Muhammad himself. So kind of be on the lookout for those things. Um, so first, I want you to think about what you've seen about ISIS or what you know about ISIS, and maybe it's maybe it's nothing. We're going to start by talking about this because these are this is a group that claims to be acting in the name of Islam. And in tomorrow's class, we're going to differentiate and try to make sense of what that means. So the Islamic State, at its peak, uh, controlled an arc of territory between Syria and northern Iraq, and even coming close to taking Baghdad. And in the uh, it has since been pulled back and is nearly out of Iraq and is mostly operating in Syria today. Uh, so what is ISIS? It is. Uh, it, it came from the term the Islamic State in Iraq and al-Sham. Uh, it also goes by ISIL, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, or the Islamic State, IS. Uh, it's a jihadist organization that aims to form an Islamic State, or what it calls a caliphate, which was is an Islamic empire. Where did it come from? It came uh, from in around 2000. Uh, it was part of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. It used to be known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Now, Al-Qaeda is the network that was behind the 9-11 attacks, and this is uh, a branch from Al-Qaeda. Uh, in 2013, it adopted a new name to reflect a more ambitious objective of creating a state itself. So they're not going to just carry out terrorist attacks. They're actually going to create an Islamic state. Um, Al-Qaeda, for ideological reasons and probably political reasons internally, expelled ISIS from the organization, and Al-Qaeda and ISIS split in 2014. Uh, what are its capabilities? Well, as of last year, this is a little out of date, as of last year, they had an estimated 17,000 fighters, including roughly 100 Americans and maybe 500 British citizens. Um, we had... Uh, the money at its peak, it reported to have uh, wealth and assets in total of $2 billion, particularly because it controlled uh, certain oil regions in uh, Iraq and in Syria, but it also uh, would tax locals as well in livestock and, and, and money. Uh, territory, again, at its peak, it had kind of this snaking band in eastern Syria and western and northern Iraq that amounts to roughly the size of Belgium, although with uh, U.S. support and backing, the Iraqi government has managed to push them militarily out of Iraq. All right. So what are ISIS's threats to the region? Uh, ISIS it threatened at its height to dismembered Iraq, although that does seem to be abating at this moment. Um, it, its goal and threat was to create a, Sun, a Sunni Islamist state. Islamist is not Islamic. Islamist is a radical version of Islam uh, that could launch military operations at other neighboring states. So if it gets a stronghold, uh, it could unite with other Sunni uh, Islamic states. We'll talk more about Sunni later. Um, and it threatens to spark broader sectarian uh, conflict in the region. Sectarian meaning different ethnic groups, different political groups. It could just shatter the Middle East into more conflict than we already um, what is this threat to us, to the West, to Europe, to the United States? Um, government officials uh, worry that some Americans or Europeans fighting with ISIS may return to the U.S. to carry out attacks. Um, we have had examples in this past, and this is largely what is behind um, the so-called Muslim ban that is being proposed by the Trump administration. Um, the U.S. government doesn't have any specific uh, intelligence, at least that we know of, of a credible threat from ISIS to the United States, to the homeland of the United States. Um, um, so you're, we're going to we're going to hear a lot of terms. You hear a lot of terms in the news: uh, Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda in Iraq, uh, jihadists. Uh, we're going to hear terms like caliph and caliphate or Islamic caliphate. Uh, we're going to hear Sunni. I just mentioned the word Sunni. Uh, we're going to hear um, its counterpart, so to speak, would be the Shias. Uh, Syria, Iraq. Where did all this stuff come from? Um, and we're going to explore, as in this unit, we're going to talk about the, the the rise of Islam and also the the Ottoman Empire, which was the last Islamic empire that fell during World War I, 
Um, and so we're going to cover some of these things, um, including what is where did Islam come from? What do Muslims themselves think about things like ISIS, and, and what does the Quran say? To, does the does the, does Islam condone this as ISIS claims it? Does? Um, so. Um, you know, we're going to look at what our role in the United States and Europe is. Why attack the U.S. and Europe? What can we or should we do or think about? Um, what should we tell our representatives to do about this situation? Um, should we blame religion? Is this a religion thing or more political? So um, one thing to keep in mind is, as we go through this discussion and research is what role did uh, religion play in Islamic State? Now? All right, so let's, let's get to the religion itself. The basic teachings of Islam are founded on a few principles, one of which is the five pillars of Islam. And this comes from the Quran, which is the word of God as spoken through the prophet Muhammad. Uh, and the five pillars uh, uh, state that there is no God but Allah. Uh, Muhammad is his prophet. So it's Allah, by the way, is the same God that uh, Christians and Jews believe in. Uh, it's just that Allah is the Arabic word for God. And Muhammad, so it, this is saying, one, we're a monotheistic religion, believe one God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Uh, it says that it calls on all Muslims to pray five times a day facing Mecca, which is where Muhammad uh, had his revelations. Uh, so one God, Allah is a prophet, pray five times. Uh, the wealthy should give alms to the poor. So if you have the means, you should give uh, charity to the poor, aid to the poor. Uh, and uh, during the month of Ramadan, you should fast during the day and only eat at the end of the day. <clears throat> And then at one point in your lifetime, all Muslims are encouraged to make a pilgrimage to Mecca where the whole religion began. Um, the other element we should know about um, Islam is something called the Hadiths. The Hadith is another way devout Muslims can try and figure out how to act and live and how to believe and, and, and you know what to do. Um, the Hadiths are kind of like, what would Muhammad do here? And so the, the Hadith, a short definition would be, these are writings about the life of Muhammad. So if you, the first source is, well, what, what should we do as devout Muslims? We should look in the Quran and see what God says. Um, but if that doesn't solve it, you could also read about what, what, did, what did Muhammad do in his lifetime? How did he act? Let's be like him. Because if he's talking to God, they must know what we're doing. Um, like anything in history, um, you have some sources about Muhammad's life that are, are well sourced, that are pretty accurate. By you know, it might be uh, someone who worked with him every day. It could be a, a brother or a relative or you know, a sister-in-law. Um, and some of them are very badly sourced. Like I knew a guy who once worked with a guy who knew Muhammad, and he said Muhammad did this. I mean, so there's there's good and bad sources, and um, this is where a lot of the confusion comes from is about what Muhammad would want. Um, okay, the other thing, a term you often hear is the term jihad, which just very vaguely means struggle in the path of God. What does this mean? How is it defined? Well, it depends on who you ask, but it's defined by many Muslims as just striving to lead a good Muslim life, praying, fasting during Ramadan, being a good spouse, being a good parent. Um, and, you know, the other definition of it is to spread the word of Islam through either through example or trying to convince people to be Muslim, kind of what we think of missionary work. Um, Another angle on jihad is to support struggling and oppressed Muslims around the world. Um, and it's your duty to help one another out. Um, a more radical kind of what you think of ISIS, bin Laden, Osama bin Laden type angle, and this is what we often, I think, associate it with, is this uh, working to overthrow governments in the Muslim world and attacking America for not being devout enough, for being unpure, etc., etc. Most scholars uh, in, of Islam agree that this is not what the meaning of jihad meant. We'll talk about where they get this in a minute. But the, the most common jihad idea is to struggle to be a good Muslim, um, and maybe if you're super devout, support struggling Muslims around the world and spread the word of Islam. All right. Um, so we're, let's talk about Muhammad and his jihad. So uh, Muhammad in the, in the Islamic religion is God's prophet. It's believed that he, you know, God spoke through him. And um, what he did was, is he was living in uh, 7th century um, Saudi Arabia, not Saudi Arabia, Arabia, and in this town called Mecca, and there was uh, this place called the Kaaba, where people from all over, you can see this thing here in the drawing right here, is the Kaaba, um, people from all over the place would go and worship these very statues and what called idols, uh, and it was good for business, and the merchants, um, you know, made a good good business there, they had hotels, and it was, it was like a tourist tra attraction, basically. Um, what happened was, is... Muhammad comes down and says, look, these idols are false, they're not real, there's only one God, and it's this guy, Allah, it's called God, and all these things are false idols, and so he begins to challenge the validity of these, these statues around the Kaaba, and he, uh, you know, in fact, he and his followers begin to break them, and the, and the merchants are concerned that they're going to be run out of business if he has his way, and too many followers, and so Muhammad's kind of like the Robin Hood guy, he's supporting the poor, and the wealthy merchants run him out of town. 
um, and his followers are driven from Mecca um, to a place called Medina, which is like 50 miles outside of, of Mecca. He gathers strength. They decide on rules for, you know, what did God say? How do we retake this? And so he kind of wrote down rules for um, taking back Mecca against the merchants and creating this the one true religion. And so in the in the Quran, you see kind of what are, what are known as the sword verses. You see these kind of rules for warfare engagement and that come in this kind of context. We've been driven out of Mecca. How do we go back to Mecca and, and retake it for the name of Islam? And, you know, and, and help defend the faith. And so tomorrow when we read this, the Quranic verses that are known as the sword verses, it's in this context that he was talking about, but it's these verses that are often taken to justify violent actions today. So, all right. So, 7th century, Muhammad's living in the 600s, and he challenges the local elites. He's driven out of there, um, and when they come back to take it, he sees himself and his followers as fighting against corruption and oppression and helping to defend the faith that God has, has told him about. Um, and uh, that's what we have in the Quran. All right, and just to remind ourselves, this is the 1600s. Uh, I'm sorry, the 600s. All right. Um, so Islamic fundamentalism is a is what we is the is extreme religious uh, conservative version of this. It's often um, what you know we think about when we think of, of terrorists. However, the majority of fundamentalists are you know very radically conservative, but they're not violent. Uh, but it's the fringe version of those who turn to violence. So what do fundamentalists want? Fundamentalists want to return to kind of this idealized, mostly falsified golden age where society is ruled by Sharia, which is Islamic law. Uh, all laws must be checked by the hadiths and and Islam, and if it doesn't mesh with it, then it doesn't. It shouldn't live. Uh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't exist. Um, they reject all things Western, uh, especially secularism. And and this is what a lot of fundamentals have a big problem with the West is that there is a separation of state from religious institutions. So we have a separation of church and state. That is secular. Secular is non-religious, worldly stuff. Um, and fundamentals reject uh, the idea that Westerners detach our way of life and government from religion. They see the two should be interwoven to support this true way. Um, and they seek equality between rich and the poor. And it appears that my secular definition is not going away. I apologize. But they seek more of a equality for the poor and the rich. Um, and they hearken back to this one kind of true, true era in which Muhammad lived. And they wanted to return to this golden society. Most historians agree that it's a falsification of Islamic history. And um, women did not go back to their traditional role that they, they imagined. Um, and that they were actually quite open and cosmopolitan. And women played a large role. Um, but but looking at some badly sourced hadiths or reading into certain um, Quranic verses, they justify the, what we in the West often see as uh, suppression of women. Um, this is uh, what Islamic fundamentalists want. Um, in a nutshell today, Islamic fundamentalists today, they see the original generation struggle, the jihad, Muhammad and his followers being driven up by the, the Meccan merchants as, uh, as, as an example for the fundamentalists today living in uh, the Middle East where you have Western domination or we had Western domination in some cases we still do uh, and local corruption um, these guys are fighting in the original struggle and so they are they see themselves as Muhammad's original guys basically um, so the big question is, does the Book of Islam condone terrorism if these guys keep referring to it? And so tomorrow we're going to look at some of these verses and, and keep in mind some of the context and the history and try and figure that out. Uh, tomorrow's quiz, make sure you know uh, that Islam is the religion, Muslims are the people that practice it, that uh, the Quran is the holy book, the word of God as told by uh, God to Muhammad. Know the five pillars of faith, um, know what the hadiths are, know jihad, and know who Muhammad was and what his time was like. All right, good luck tomorrow.